track, boy. Three years, Italian fashion house Gucci and Harlem, New York based Taylor Dapper Dan have had a colorful history to say the least. We did a video a while back detailing the checkered relationship of the two. And if you had not seen it, you really should go back and check that out because it's our most popular video so far. To summarize, in the 80s, Gucci sued Dapper Dan out of business for using fabrics for custom one of designs. Last year, Gucci received flack for making a complete 180 and releasing a design that very closely resembled one of Dan's in the past. The subsequent heat persuaded them to seek a collaborative effort with Dapper Dan in a recent fall campaign. However, what came as a complete shock was when the news broke of a joint effort to reopen the Harlem clothing shop. That's right, the very same shop that they sought so hard to destroy in the 80s. It's also the very first luxury brand to open up shop in Harlem, which is really sad considering the historic neighborhood has long since been a hub for urban street fashion. But perhaps it's truly a sign of how much high fashion covered streetwear consumers these days. Dapper Dan himself tweeted out the news sharing, quote, a sign of the times. For the first time in history, a major luxury brand store has opened in Harlem. Gucci by Dapper Dan Harlem with made to order garments for your taste and in your specific measurements. I'll create designs from your mind or I'll come up with a design for you, end quote. Available by appointment only, the new boutique will have made to order garments and will also carry limited edition items and accessories. I'm Nate the Great from Flight 214 and as I said, the last video we did on Gucci Dapper Dan debacle was our most popular video to date. But in this video, we go a little bit more in depth with the history and background of Mr. Dapper Dan himself. So first, you know the spiel. Don't forget to hit the like button and then the subscribe button. We love our fans and we love to hear feedback from you guys. So for those that don't know, Dapper Dan grew up in Harlem on 129th Street in Lexington in Humble Means. He went to an elementary school three blocks away from where poet Langston Hughes lived. And his mom loved to play the lottery. And when she hit, she treated him to a new pair of shoes. Learning of his affinity for fashion early, he soon grew tired of waiting on his mom to strike luck on scratch offs to go back and pick up more dope kicks. So, he started running the streets with a shoplifting crew that included Richard Pee Wee Kirkland, who himself would go on to become a legendary street baller and D-boy. Kirkland's talent on the court caught the eye of the NBA and the Chicago Bulls attempted to draft him in 69, but he turned it down because the streets were paying him more at the time. These were the streets that reared Dapper Dan playing craps, gambling, and hobnobbing with uptown gangster greats like Nicky Barnes. Many may think that Dan's name came from his love of fashion, but he actually got it when he beat an older gambler in a dice game. In the New York Times profile, they says that the man crowned him, quote, the new Dapper Dan, and the older gentleman, he decided to go by the name Tenor Man Dan since he also happened to be a tenor saxophonist. In those days, urban fashion influence included the Black Panthers who were usually clad in black leather blazers, powder blue shirts, black trousers, and black berets, while their counterparts, the Nation of Islam, often wore suits over crisp white shirts with bow ties and black frame glasses. In terms of style, underwear to heroes like gangsters and drug dealers were the original style icons, using their gangs to outwardly express their financial successes. Hip hop was influenced by the gangsters, explains Dapper Dan. The rappers wanted to be like the gangsters because the gangsters were the ones who had the money. Then the hip hop artists became rich and they became the ones that everybody wanted to be like. In the 80s, rappers wanted to look powerful and successful, so their outfits had to convey the same message as their lyrics. Pioneering the DIY aesthetic inspired by graffiti writers, Shirt King Fade gained attention for his eye popping airbrush t shirts and jeans, turning street art into early street wear. It wasn't uncommon to customize tees and jackets with iron on Cooper black letters to symbolize the crew that you were representing. Rap elites of the day, Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh, Big Daddy Kane, and Eric B. and Rakim were all known for their flamboyant masculine sense of style, but the high fashion houses they aspired to wear didn't even speak to the same audience as their music. And this is where Dapper Dan comes in. He opened his boutique on 43rd and 125th Street in 1982. Like many of his customers that happened to be rappers, he was sampling street-ready trends while mixing in pops of high fashion. Quote, the clothes just didn't match the message and the sampling that the young people were bringing about, says Dow. They needed something that was consistent with the attitude and the approach toward their reality, and that wasn't there at the time. Brands like Gucci, Louis Vuitton, MCM, and Fendi were already popular amongst the hip-hop community, 
but many felt that they didn't really speak to the styles in the streets. Mind you, this was before the day of high fashion's love affair with streetwear. Remember, as we spoke in our last video, the evolution of hip hop fashion, style in hip hop at that time had a much baggier fit. So Dap would re-envision the brands in a new context, giving them a more generous fit, so to speak, and shape that spoke to the younger, more discerning audience. As Nas points out in his 2015 documentary, Fresh Dressed, what Dapper Dan offered his customers was a certain unpretentiousness, and like any good tailor, a more accurate understanding of what his clients wanted. I mean, sure, there were people in the hood who could afford to be able to step into a Louis Vuitton or Gucci boutique and cop a few pickups, but at that time they were, how can I say, treated differently than the label's typically old money customers. Not to mention that at this time, the lines of street fashion and high fashion had yet to be blurred. So many of the selections generally didn't fit the criteria of the average hip hop head. In the same documentary, Dap describes what he did as blackenizing the apparel of these labels, making them look even better on his consumers than the brands themselves. Dap boasts that the boutique stayed open 24 seven for 10 years and had an after hours window where late night customers could come get work done. The store was shut down in 92 after cops raided his shop and multiple labels, including Gucci, hit him with copyright infringement lawsuits. It's ironic that his logo lace designs are finally being proven as ahead of their time. But there are two main reasons Dap thinks that super prominent branding is so relevant in modern fashion. After receiving negative attention for releasing a coat that looked eerily similar to a piece created by Dap in the 80s, Gucci decided to reach out. In a deal brokered by Jelini, Dan's son, and Steve Stout, now CEO of brand development firm Translation, an agreement was reached to reopen his Harlem shop. Dap was rumored to have been a bit salty with Gucci, and if you think about it, for good reason. It's not like Dap was reproducing counterfeit Gucci in the 80s. What he was doing was simply taking pieces released by the brand and reimagining them. There was no reason for them to go after him with such vigor only to now want to work with him because they see a way to make money off the guy? I mean, this is business, but if I was Dap, I would've came in with a screw you attitude also. But nothing helps get over anger like a fat ass check, apparently. The new shop will be opening later on this year, and as for the old shop, it's now a school. So what do you think? How do you feel about Gucci now going in with Dapper Dan to reopen the shop that they once worked so hard to shut down? Drop a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe for updates every time we drop a new video. So from Flight 214, I'm Nate the Great. Till next time.